News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning. I'm Augusta McDonald. Thank you for starting your day with us. A contingent of lawmakers in D.C. just reintroduced a bill this month to have Indigenous Peoples Day today officially replace Columbus Day as a federal holiday. The day is meant to recognize the painful history Native Americans have faced in this country. High rates of Indigenous people who have gone missing or been murdered in recent years continue, continue to plague the community. Q2's Alina Howder shows us how local groups are using this holiday to raise awareness for the MM. IP movement. In the state of Montana, currently as of today, we have 49 missing Indigenous people. It's an epidemic that Billings resident Charlene Sleeper has dedicated her life to. The impact that a missing person has on a family is lifelong if they're not recovered. It's why she started MMIP Billings in 2018, an organization dedicated to bridging the cross-cultural gap and raising awareness about the movement. But her focus is a little different this year. We're not elevating the sacredness of, of males within our tribes. And so I want Indigenous males, personally from my perspective, to know how incredibly important they are and that they are part of this movement. Sleepers hosting an event through MMIP Billings at the Billings Public Library Monday, honoring two Indigenous missing men, Hub Williamson and Robert Garrett Stewart Jr. They're both cousins, they're related. Uh, they were both 34 years old when they went missing. It's an opportunity for both natives and non-natives to learn more about the epidemic. Sleeper says non-natives are extremely important to the work. Groups like MMIP Billings have given non-natives like Katie Harrison the resources and courage to make her own waves in the movement. This is a tragedy that's, that the whole community should be stepping up and trying to support and figure it out, figure these problems out. Uh, and not just leave it to the indigenous people uh, to try to solve those uh, issues on their own. Harrison just collaborated with Sleeper for an event through her nonprofit Sustaina Billings. And we came up with an idea to uh, tag a local artist named Ruby Hahn and uh, have Ruby come and do a live painting during the event and we'd auction it off and that money would be donated to Big Sky MMIP. It's something very much appreciated by Sleeper and something she hopes will catch on. We need to continue these conversations is, is basically what I'm going on. We also need to know that non-natives care, which I'm well aware that non-natives do care. Um, I would like to see them show up more often. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Alrighty, we'll continue to follow that story. And also this week we're headed into fall, Miller, but it's going to be a little bit warm. Yeah, you know what's going to be warm today? Some of us may try to even try hit 80. It's not completely out of the question. We will yeah. we'll see that here in Billings. A lot of sunshine out there, but fall makes a return as we get into the middle of the week. We really do have some big changes on the way and we'll break it all down with the main forecast. It's milder than normal as we wake up this morning. In fact, uh, Billings, I think we're the only spot right now that's in the 50s. We're right at 50, a good 10 degrees above where we should be waking up. Uh, feels like 50, of course, humidity at 61%. The dew point temperatures are 37 degrees. Winds out of the southwest at about 15 miles an hour. So there you go. You see temperatures around there. Well, it looks like Red Lodge and Cody now have gotten into the act on the 50s. Look at Sheridan down into the 30s. We're seeing a lot of 40s out there. Clear skies. Very, very nice day on the way. But there we go. There's that bad boy coming out of the Pacific Northwest. We have a trough. We have a cold front. We have an area of low pressure. A lot of stuff to give us a chance of seeing some rain and a big cool down. Also, a lot of mountain snow possible, too. I'll tell you about that. A lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of stuff we'll going on. Up. Yeah. All right, crazy no. week. Crazy week. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. We'll hear more from Miller in a minute. But first, this morning, we're learning Americans are among the dead as violence between Israel and Hamas flared up over the weekend. On Saturday, the terrorist group launched a devastating surprise attack that killed hundreds of Israeli civilians and members of the military. The Israeli prime minister declared war on Hamas after the attack. The Israeli Defense Force reports more than 700 have been killed and 2,100 are wounded. The Gaza Ministry of Health says nearly 400 Palestinians have died in the fighting that's followed the initial attack. And even though this war is being fought 6,000 miles away, people in Billings are feeling the impact of this violence. Our Haley Monaco speaks with faith leaders. What has transpired is people refer to as Israel's 9-11. A surprise attack on Israel from Hamas militants Saturday has left hundreds dead and even more injured after innocent lives were attacked. Gaza hasn't had an election since 06, so this is really just a preformed terror group that was never elected or chosen or reflective of the people in Gaza, so that also adds to kind of the tragic element. 
MSU Billings United Campus Ministry Reverend Dwight Welch helped put the climbing death toll into perspective. If we were to do a scale to the U.S., it would be like losing 20,000 Americans in one day. So it's, it's a shock on that level, and it, it's a shock to Israel. It should be a shock to the world. Welch works with many foreign exchange students who attend MSUB and says it's always important to offer them support, especially during times like these. I know students from that region that I can reach out to. And I think that's kind of the thing. If you know people in your life who are scared, who are watching this, to just know there's somebody who has their back. He has seen firsthand how a tragedy overseas can directly impact people in Billings. I've noticed that um, Muslim and Jewish students and folks in the community can often bear the brunt of what happens over there. <laughs> it's just crazy. As the war continues to rage thousands of miles away, the Reverend reminds everyone to be kind to all. Some may know folks in that region and have, even have family who are impacted. And so I, I feel like as a community what we want to do is guard against anything that would uh, be used to target or make, the, make them feel not welcome and safe and, and also to express some solidarity. It's been the deadliest day in decades in the long-running Palestinian-Israeli conflict and the U.S. government is working to verify reports of Americans being among the dead or those taken hostage. Reporting in Billings for MTN News, I'm Haley Monaco. Thank you, Haley. Lawmakers will return to Capitol Hill with a House Speaker vote expected this week. Over the weekend, endorsements rolled in for the two Republicans looking to earn the speakership. Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan and House Majority Leader Steve Scalise of Louisiana. The post is open right uh, after a group of hard right Republicans and Democrats voted Kevin McCarthy out. Tomorrow, a candidate forum is set to take place in D.C. Our Joe St. George looks at the likelihood the office of speaker is actually filled this week. Last week, was historic. The first Speaker of the House ever to be voted out of office. This week, Republicans begin the process of electing a new Speaker. And there are two ways that this will go. A quick selection full of unity or a drawn out process full of division. Here are the two Republican lawmakers you really need to be paying attention to right now. Congressman Steve Scalise of Louisiana and Congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio. Scalise is the current majority leader and came to power alongside former Speaker Kevin McCarthy. But that doesn't mean much right now. McCarthy was also very close to Jordan, appointing him chair of the powerful Judiciary Committee, a top job with subpoena power. Scalise is currently battling a form of blood cancer, myeloma. He described his diagnosis as treatable in the past few days. The cancer has dropped dramatically because of the success of the chemotherapy. In addition to battling cancer, Scalise was nearly killed by a shooter in 2017 while practicing baseball with some of his congressional colleagues. He returned weeks later to bipartisan applause and presented responding officers the Capitol Police Medal of Honor. As for Jordan, he technically lacks the leadership experience of Scalise, but he doesn't lack name recognition. Jordan has been in office since 2007, going viral many times for taking on individuals like Dr. Anthony Fauci. Mr. Chairman, I don't want you to answer my question. The American people want Dr. Fauci to answer the well, question. Both men have similar conservative voting records. One key difference is Ukraine. Jordan recently voted against a $300 million aid package. Scalise supported it. Of course, it's very possible that no candidate reaches the necessary number to win, and that a name not even mentioned in this report could emerge. Some members of Congress have even said they want former President Donald Trump to do the job. After all, you don't need to be a member of the House to be Speaker. Trump did, however, endorse Jordan last week. So how was the Speaker of the House selected? Well, there are typically 435 voting members. That means 218 is typically the number you need to win a majority. But right now, there are only 433 members. Two seats are vacant. If every member votes this week, that means 217 will be the magic number, a number that could change and become even lower if some skip the vote or vote present. Before any vote happens on the floor of the House this week, Republicans will first cast votes privately for their conference's pick. That vote is slated for Wednesday, but the winner doesn't guarantee that person will become Speaker. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Joe, thank you. 
Pharmacy employees at Walgreens stores across the country will be walking off the job this week, protesting what they say are harsh working conditions and unfair vaccination expectations. So far this morning, it remains unclear if any Billings locations will participate in these walkouts. And this morning, we're already counting down the days until the next pink breakfast. Thanks to you, we raised over $12,000 on Friday for Pack the Place in Pink. Again, that was our live broadcast Friday morning. All of that money stays right here in Montana to financially support hundreds of breast cancer patients. A longtime Yellowstone County Correctional Officer is fighting cancer, but he's not going through it alone. Jason Valdez tells us battling this disease has made for a hectic couple of months, but the support of his community makes it all a little better. Q2's Charlie Kleps has this story. Staff is the backbone of the jail. The life of a jail officer in Yellowstone County isn't easy. It's a tough job. But for nearly 25 years, it's been Jason Valdez's life, and it's one he's come to love. And then you get to know the inmates. You treat them like human beings. I mean, we all make mistakes. He's used to helping others, but lately it's been the other way around. It was probably one of the worst days of my life, if not the worst day. We were just smacked right in the mouth with the worst case scenario. Receiving the devastating diagnosis was one of the most difficult days for him and his family. You don't want to see your, your younger siblings, you know, having to deal with this, go through this. But Valdez quickly found out that he wouldn't be fighting the disease alone. Friends, family, and coworkers got together planning fundraisers that benefit him. It's very, very overwhelming, and I've been very blessed. This is truly what he needs. He needs to see the people here that love him and are supporting him through all this. His brother says these events have made a huge impact on his brother's health. He looks great, you know, and to see him out doing things now, um, honestly, I didn't think he was going to leave that hospital. And as Jason continues to progress, he's already eyeing a return to work, knowing they need every man they can get. My goal is to go back to work here next within the month. We're short staff as it is people know. For now, he's letting the treatment do its job, trying to be grateful for all of the support and love he's received. For the people that have been involved and, and helped me out, um, my family, I really, really appreciate it. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News.